Okay, we have to uh, get some type of idea on how to use our sign conventions now that we're dealing with this new idea of acceleration. We've talked a few times about how to use mathematically the differences in direction because we can't apply things like west into any of our any of our equations. However, things like negatives and positives work very nicely in the situation. And this, uh, we've recently been talking about having anything happens to the left as negative, anything to the right as positive. Now, we always also declare our reference point. And this is something we can always choose. In problems, it's usually pretty much chosen for us, to the left of a building, to the right of a stop sign. But it's, it's something that when we create our problems, we can freely choose. Now, anything that happens to the left, we declare as negative, anything right as positive. And we've talked about position with this, like if there's an object over here, it's a red pizza, uh, pepperonis with some white cheese on it. This is to the left of the reference point, so we would say its position is negative. Okay. Now, independent of where it is, it could also be traveling at some certain speed. For instance, if it's over here, independent of where it is, that speed it's traveling may be either to the left or to the right. Well, that direction it's traveling in, in this case, let's say it's traveling to the right, its velocity will be determined by the direction it's traveling. As you can see, in this case, it is positive. Okay. So how do we deal with acceleration? Because as you may know, there is positive and negative accelerations. And these also dictate the direction as far as which way it's going to go. It's independent of the direction it's going. I'm sorry, uh, it's independent of the position it has, as well as independent of the velocity. It only is determined by the direction the velocity is changing. Let's take a, I don't know, I usually just draw shapes and try to give them some type of idea. Like, what could this possibly be? I don't know, the world's most awkward hourglass. Let's assume that the size of the arrows I'm drawing indicate how fast an object is. In other words, this guy's cruising. If there was an object described by this arrow, this guy would be very barely puttering along. This guy would be traveling at some medium velocity. So let's use this arrow, the size of it, the length of it, to describe how fast an object is going. Now if this, say, is its initial velocity, and at some later time we notice that its velocity has decreased, um, we want to know that this change in velocity from initial to final, is this a positive or a negative acceleration? Two ways to do it, mathematically and graphically. I'm going to talk in this video about the way to do it graphically. The mathematical way can be shown in about 30 seconds. Uh, maybe I'll show it at the end, but most likely not. Here's what we're going to do. The change between these two velocities is what we're concerned about. The direction and the change in velocity is going to be the, dis the direction in the acceleration. If we see this first arrow here, it starts out of this length. How much the length this arrow have to change to actually get an arrow of this length? That should show us how much the velocity has changed. If you see at some point the arrow is of this length and it has to decrease in length by this much, that's how much the velocity had to change. Well, what direction did that change happen in? If it was over here and it had to change to this part, this is the direction it had to change in. This arrow describes the change in velocity. If that happened at a certain time period, that would be the acceleration. Can you see which direction it is? Of course you can. This is an arrow to the left, so we say that this is currently in a negative acceleration. If this object, regardless of where it is, negative position, positive position, positive velocity or negative velocity, no matter which direction it is traveling, where it is, if its acceleration changes to the left, then it's going to be in a negative velocity. In this case, the initial velocity is to the left. Let's have this guy speed up. So a small amount of time later, his velocity is like this. His final velocity is bigger than the initial what direction does velocity have to change from initial to final? It started out at this length. It had to change to get to this length to reach the final velocity. Started here, ended here, happened to the left, so we once again dictate this a negative acceleration. All right. Remember, the direction, the velocity, 
or the direction of the position has nothing to do with the direction of the acceleration. They're all independent. So if these are negative accelerations, what might a positive acceleration look like? Let's come over here. Let's take, uh, once again, a crescent moon. I don't want to move the entire moon, so we're going to pretend this is actually just a banana. A brown banana, an old spooled banana, which is in this case traveling to the right at a medium speed. Let's increase the velocity of this object and see what type of acceleration that would be. Now, with the symmetry that you usually expect from teachers, you might automatically be saying this is going to be a positive acceleration. Over here on the left, we had a negative and a negative acceleration, so chances are this is positive acceleration. But why? Let's observe the change in velocity, which is what's important for the acceleration. The acceleration initially was this much. We increased it in this direction to get from this arrow to this arrow. What direction is the change? The change to the right, which we deem positive. Welcome to a positive acceleration. And right, this banana, which has returned to its just color, it has somehow unripened itself, is now traveling to the left with not too much velocity, initial velocity. Let's decrease its speed so this arrow is tiny. Oh, so tiny. Oh, so tiny. How much has the uh, size of this arrow changed. Has it gotten bigger? Has it gotten smaller? Has it changed to the left? Has it changed to the right? We started out something like this. It had to change from here to here to become this length. What direction was that change? That change was to the right for a positive acceleration. All right, there we go. So remember, when trying to figure out the direction of the acceleration, don't pay attention to the position. Don't ask yourself, where is it? Don't ask yourself, what is its velocity? It might be helpful to figure out uh, the change, but it's all independent. You can have a positive acceleration with both a positive and a negative velocity, and likewise the negative acceleration with positive and negative velocity as well. All right, that's all we have for this.